So I, I arrive at Hull, and um, uh, you have to sort of sign up for a special subject. Practically everyone else seemed to be signing up for something called industry and trade, which I felt well, didn't sound terribly exciting. So, and then I saw this. <laughs> I saw this thing called sociology right at the bottom. <laughs> and I said, well, that sounds interesting. It, it, it's referred to things like sort of family and class mm -hmm. and all that sort of thing. I thought, I'll, I'll give that a whirl. And in fact, there were only two people um, uh, teaching sociology, uh, Peter Worsley and uh, another person I found very influential, Gordon Horobin. Mm -hmm. um, and not many more students, actually, <laughs> about, about, <laughs> about, about, about half a dozen students. Um, um, but very quickly, I, I discovered that sociology was what I really was interested in. So I tried to get as much sociology or political science or something like that in my, the package as I, I had. So that although I came out with a, um, a BSc Econ, um, sociology was a very much large part of it. I, I continued to do a master's. You, you can only do a master's by thesis at that time at, uh, at Hull, um, where I wrote um, a, a thesis on the... Uh, social and educational backgrounds of Anglican bishops. I think the, the interesting thing that I found, if you, if you sort of took this over uh, a hundred year period as I did, uh, at the beginning of that period, uh, bishops were very much part of a broad social elite. You know, there were close connections with the army and, and, uh, and, and uh, the government. And what you began to get over this period is, is that the, the bishops, as with that, became more of a specifically ecclesiastical or religious elite. When, when Manchester then, then was a department of social anthropology and sociology, and um, sociology had the feel of being slightly added on to uh, uh, social anthropology, which was then, uh, the professor was the very, uh, very well-known and very charismatic uh, Max Gluckman. And there, so there were three of us um, employed on studying a uh, a factory, an uh, uh, electrical instruments factory in Salford, um, and then there were also um, uh, down the corridor people like Colin Lacey were studying schools and, and so on. So that was how that came about. Mm -hmm. In listening to their sort of conversations on, at the tea breaks and, uh, or, or when I was working on, on, on the bench and so on, you became aware um, of uh, relationships outside in the community in, in Salford and particularly much of the conversation revolved around family and children. I arrived at Manchester, sort of full of Seawright sea -right Mills. That's what we'd all been, been reading, and mm. that's what we thought mm. it actually would be about. And then uh, going to my first seminar, in which the whole board was covered with kinship diagrams and so on, um, was slightly baffling, to say, to say the least. And, you know, you, you, there was this, the wall would be covered with these triangles and circles and there was a group of us including I think John Lee who I think some of you might might remember um, and um, Valdo Pons and things. we had sort of clandestine discussions on Max Weber would you believe um, <laughs> and, and I suppose in, in I suppose one of the things that, that uh, sort of led to social theory within the family was that um, you know, quite a lot of the literature on the family was yes I mean quite quite interesting but it um it seemed to be a series of sort of largely discrete uh, studies mm. of mate selection, mm. Um, mm. Uh, divorce, mm. um, parenting, perhaps. Mm. You know, and, and, and I think that family life was actually a bit more interesting, a bit more dangerous mm. than this. Um, and um, so I'd sort of, I'm becoming aware of. Um, uh, some of the, the, the sort of feminist literature, and that, that uh, increased after I spent a year in uh, the University of Victoria mm -hmm. in, in Canada. Well, I, I, I think that, um, again, I, I'd started sort of writing um, uh, little bits of pieces um, where I've sort of tried to say, well, what, um, what does this sort of feminist critique mean initially for family sociology, but I also later wanted to ask what it meant for sociology generally. Um, and so uh, I, I, I you know, started sort of um, uh, trying to sort of talk about this and saying that we, we really need to put it on the agenda. Um, so I, I, I suppose that, that led me to sort of asking, you know, about issues about men and masculinities in doing sociology. Mm. Um, and uh, 
the book Discovering Men was mm. really um, a kind of, um, I wouldn't, wouldn't say it's about the methodology of men's studies, but it, it, it was about, if you like, the logic and the uh, practice of, of mm. men's studies, how men came to, um, you know, uh, came to un reach some kind of critical understanding of their place in the world and, and in relation to sociological practice. Mm. If, if, you, if you accept that uh, sociological practice is gendered and that gender isn't just something you just sort of add on at the end, but it should, you know, runs right through what mm. you're talking about, whether it's family or sociological theory or class or whatever, uh, then what are the implications of that? And re also realising that gender isn't just women. Um, so, you know, what, what have men to do with class, for example? What have men, well, we know what men have to do with power, but, you know, but what have men to do with family? What have men to do with leisure? Um, one of my sort of other main interests, which is in autobiographical studies, um, and um, I think part of the argument was that autobiography is not necessarily these, these huge books that you can buy in in Waterstones, but um, we all engage in autobiographical practices, and one kind of place where you do this is when you prepare your CV, you know, because you're preparing a particular kind of account, just highlighting certain things, editing out other things, and that indeed, indeed did have an impact, um, because um, shortly after it was published, um, we were summoned to the Vice-Chancellor's mm -hmm. office, who Martin Harris was um, the Vice-Chancellor, he was actually very interested in what we'd written, and sort of, uh, you know, was actually said, "Well, how can we, uh, how c how can we, uh, sort of, um, you know, treat these everyday academic practices more sympathetically?" Well, no, I think I think since since the um, since I did the sort of Bloomsbury stuff, I became interested in um, um, auto stroke biography, mm -hmm. and I I, I I like that particular way of thinking about so, uh, social relations. I don't see it at all as self-indulgent or anything like that. I, it, it's, a, it's a way of uh, understanding the connectedness of social lives uh, between people and over time and, 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 and so on. And I think that the, the autobiographical term, as I think is sometimes referred to, is actually a very major contribution to um, sociological inquiry generally. Um, so that, that also I think, I think you're, you're right, there is a kind of link between my particular interests and acquaintanceship, for, you know, which for those who haven't read it, it's what I call the space between intimates and strangers. And you know, the general practices of sociologists, no, I, I assume most uh, uh, scholarly activities, um, um, and that, that to me is, is, is the way that um, you know, sociology gets done. It, it, it's it's um, uh, building up these kind of networks and connections and, and reflecting on them and, um, and, 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 and so on.